In the beginning, I certainly was not a pop artist, and um, there weren't any. There weren't any pop artists. Lots of hard edge going on. So we were the anti-abstract expressionist group. I would come and go from my uh, uh, loft and be confronted with this signage all over my building. And of course, it was on those very floors that I found all the brass stencils that became the very basis for all of my work. This is Quanti Slip. I'm sitting on the top of my roof at 25. The tugboats slept at night just below my loft. Uh, this is the East River, and that's uh, Brooklyn Heights over there. Uh, my address was 25 Quanti Slip, and this is the kind of thing one did uh, in those days to identify the fact that you were an artist living in an illegal accommodation. This was Coenty Slip. This was Ellsworth Kelly's, Ellsworth Kelly's building. This was my building, and this was where Agnes Martin lived. And of course, the heliport is still there. Otherwise, these buildings along the waterfront have all disappeared. My uh, loft on Coenty Slip was very basic. I had only a sink and a toilet, no uh, hot water. Uh, no showers, and for eight years I lived in that manner, as, as did Ellsworth Kelly in his $45 a month loft. This was my elevator shaft. I floored it over, and it became my storeroom. And these items which I found in the, uh, the old marine works, that's what the building was, uh, ship's hardware, later was incorporated, and all those pieces now have vanished into my work. All my wordage really started because I found these marvelous old brass stencils in my loft at uh, 25 Coenty Slip. In conjunction with bringing in all the debris from the demolition sites, my pieces of wood, which had been the uh, beams of these old buildings, built after the 1830 fire, 1835 fire, which practically destroyed Lower Manhattan. Now, 100 years later or so, they, they were being demolished to make way for parking lots and eventually new skyscrapers. The beams are generally about that wide and uh, therefore could accommodate only words of three or four letters. And that was the beginning of my use of words. They started on the wood and then later became paintings. This is based on the antique form, and uh, I only had room for words of maybe three or four letters, and that started the uh, abbreviation nature of my, uh, of my wordage. I had all kinds of excuses, of course, because everybody uh, was uh, concerned about that. Uh, no, of course, that the uh, Cubists, Picasso and Brax, slipped words into their canvases, and. Words have been in art for uh, centuries. We know what the we know what the Muslims do. Uh, they do nothing but Arabic words on the uh, decoration of their buildings. It's a, a centuries-old tradition, and and I don't quite understand why it should be a shock to anybody. This is the beginning of my preoccupation with the circle, and of course, uh, as I have gone on in my work, uh, almost all of my work deals with the circle. There's even the uh, circular O in, uh, in a love painting. That's how I would sign my early canvases, uh, and all my paintings since have been signed in a, some, a somewhat fancier manner now. My uh, studio and Quinty Slip, I had a skylight and a a marvelous view of Brooklyn and the East River and the Brooklyn Bridge, and it became filled, filled with paintings. Number five is probably my favorite American painting at the Metropolitan. Uh, again, Demuth, who I greatly admired, and uh, I took that and expanded the image. This is my fifth American dream the ten number paintings, which uh, were my first uh, major representation in Europe. Uh, 
my preoccupation with numbers simply grew and grew and grew. My first experience with the word love happened in this particular building in Indianapolis, Christian Science Church in the east side of Indianapolis. And of course, every Christian Science Church has only one motif or one decoration, and that's the phrase, uh, God is love. And I was later to reverse that and make it love is God. The original love was uh, 12 inches carved from a solid block of aluminum. The next love after that was a 12-foot Corten steel love. This is on the grounds of the Indianapolis Museum. The piece has now been moved inside the newly expanded museum. Red, blue, and green being the uh, original color of the love because my father worked for Philip 66. In those days, all Philip 66 signs were red and green, and I saw it against a blue Indiana sky. It's been my major, major color combination. Mother and father, this is my uh, mother and father, taken from family snapshots, slightly, slightly altered to fit the theme. It is my idea that I uh, was born in 28, so obviously I might have been conceived in 27, and this celebrates my conception in the back seat of a Model T Ford on a, on a lonely, wintry Indiana road. My private gallery on the Bowery, my mother and father painting, and my imperial love. I grew very weary of uh, everything in New York had white walls, so I painted my uh, gallery uh, very dark gray, which set my paintings off like jewels. These are the Hartley Elegies, which celebrates that lost friendship with Carl uh, uh, von Freiburg. Uh, he was killed very early on in the war. He had received the Iron Cross. Hartley kept his Iron Cross on his uh, palette and uh, really suffered a, quite a period of grief. That's when he did his military paintings, which most people really consider his very best. And each one of my Hartley elegies is based on a specific uh, Hartley military painting.